Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of La Mulana Lore. Today I tried to pitch a double hitter and try to cover both the Mausoleum of Giants and the Spring in the Sky. Unfortunately these areas don't have a lot of reality lore, but they make up for it with a lot of in-game lore, so let's just jump into it, shall we? First we'll cover the Mausoleum of Giants. The main theme behind the Mausoleum of Giants is the story of the mother's second generation of kids. More specifically, the tale of nine giants who sought to return mother to heaven. This is actually history exclusively made for La Mulana, and has no bearing on reality, but I figure it's fun to listen to. Among the nine giant brothers, Zebu is initially screwed because he is regaled to the role of Atlas in order to keep the ground aloft. From the remaining eight, Bado, Miguela, Leto, and Futo came together to help the mother by creating a flying tower in order to send her to heaven. Meanwhile, Abuto, G, Ribu, and Sakit all wish for the mother to just stay on Earth with them. Based on the story given in the mausoleum alone, it's hard to determine what happened between the construction of the tower and the next generation of Mother's progeny, but it's generally implied that there was some sort of insurrection. During this battle, Leto suffered the worst fate by suffering grievous wounds in battle and dying. Afterwards, Sakit places a key in his chest in order to hide the secrets of the mausoleum and keep Mother safe. Bado had a case of narcolepsy, and his death is generally unknown. Sakit remains alive and remained to guard Mother as the guardian of the mausoleum. While the fate of the other brothers is hazy or unknown, it is known that Abuto was the last surviving brother next to Sakit and Zebu, and he left in order to pursue other tasks in the ruins of La Mulana. Thus, the sad tale of the giants comes to a close. In order to control the flow of time for puzzles in the mausoleum, Lameza must make use of the Nebra Sky Disk. The bronze disk is actually an artifact found near the city of Nebra Saxony Anhalt in Germany. This artifact is speculated to be associated with the Bronze Age of Civilization due to carbon dating on the wood backing, along with various other bronze artifacts excavated in the same area. The historical significance of the Nebra Sky Disk has been speculated to either be an astronomical instrument along with a significant religious artifact. Not much else is known about this artifact, though its astrological effects are quite prominent in La Mulana. A common motif in the background of the mausoleum is various depictions of the Nazca lines found in Peru. There are many to be seen, and there are even a few that didn't make it into the video game itself. Discovered in 1927, these lines have been the focus of various discussions on their purpose for ancient people. It's generally accepted that the Nazca lines were either created to act as a star map for constellations, or as a symbol for religious practices ranging from worship to making textiles for mummification. In terms of the actual game though, the Nazca lines don't have much bearing on gameplay or puzzle solving, it's mainly meant for theming. One last piece of trivia in the mausoleum is the depiction of the Wangina. This being is rooted in aboriginal mythology as cloud and rain spirits that influence a person's dream. The Wajina also punishes lawbreakers through floods, lightning, and cyclones. These beings are commonly depicted by the Aborigines as serpent-like figures as well, with no mouth, and these beings are so revered that to this day the Mwanjum tribe still preserve the tradition of worshipping these beings. In La Mulana, however, they are described as resembling an astronaut in full gear. An unusual interpretation, to be sure. While there is no common religious focus in the Mausoleum of Giants, there seems to be a common motif of astrology in this area. It's a bit of a stretch, but based on the reimagining of the Wajinda and the amount of Nazca lines depicted in the dungeon, it can be speculated that the giants were a very pious race that worshipped the mother with utmost reverence and sought to return into the heavens using Heaven's Light as a blueprint. It's a shame that due to the infighting, Mother's Wrath would fall upon them and they would be mostly eliminated in order to make way for the next generation of children. Next we have the Spring in the Sky. The main theme of Spring in the Sky is, you guessed it, Water. Lots of water. Based on tablets we've seen in both Mausoleum of the Giants and Spring in the Sky, we know so far that the Giants built a tower in order to help ascend the Mother, and Spring in the Sky acts as a sort of hydroelectric dam in order to power this tower. However, there are some interesting things to point out that aren't based around water. One of the first things we see in this stage is the Celtic Cross, a common artifact spread across the level. This cross is actually introduced by St. Patrick during the times when Christianity was being spread across Ireland. However, this has little bearing on the plot, and it's an unusual choice to place in Spring in the Sky for other reasons. You also find the Caltrops in this dungeon. Much like in real life, Lameza uses this sub-weapon in order to damage the feet of his enemies. This is actually a really widely used tool. I thought that it used to be just a Japanese weapon for ninjas, but apparently this weapon was also used in Roman wartime efforts, the Battle of Jamestown in America, and even in World War II. 
There's also a dirty trick for them to use in-game, which I personally enjoy, but that will be demonstrated across the LP, so get ready for that. The big motif in Spring in the Sky, however, are several depictions and references to the being Onus. Onus is a Babylonian demigod who is described as having the body of a fish, but the figure of a man. Often found in the Persian Gulf, Onus was described as a being who imparted the knowledge of writing, the arts, and some science upon mankind. It is also speculated that the tale of Onus is also somewhat linked to the Mesopotamian legend of the Seven Sages sent by Ea to bring knowledge to mankind. This is interesting to know mainly because not only is Onus vital to a few puzzles in the level, based on the lore found in the Mausoleum of Giants we know that the fourth generation of Mother's Children had the body of a fish, while the fifth generation possessed wisdom. Perhaps Onus was one of many tasked with passing on said knowledge upon the fifth generation in hopes that they would help ascend the Mother to Heaven. One other creature depicted on murals in the Spring of the Sky is Mushushu, a dragon-lion-eagle hybrid from Babylonian legend. This creature is cited both in-game and in historical artifacts as a beast associated with Marduk. However, in La Mulana it's also stated that it was born of the goddess Tiamat. Not much is listed about the creature in mythology aside from it being a being of worship in some religious texts. However, Mushushu plays a much more important role in the game far later on. There's one mural submerged in water that depicts the Anunnaki, a group of deities found in Mesopotamian culture. Specifically in the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Anunnaki were described as the Judges of Hell. For whatever reason, in La Mulana, they are described as aliens from the planet Nibiru, which is really derivative from its mythology. This is probably the only place we see Anunnaki referenced, however. Throughout the level, we tend to encounter what are essentially mer-horses. These are actually a reference to a Greek mythological creature called the Hippocamp. While not a noticeable legendary creature, we often see them used in Renaissance art pieces, often struggling with Greek warriors. In La Mulana, Lemeza certainly finds himself struggling to fight them due to underwater mobility and the sheer speed of the Hippocamp. They're a freaking annoying enemy. Finally, we have the mid-boss of this area. This boss is named Nuklavi officially, but for the sake of my sanity, we'll just use the community coin named Jackrabbit. This mid-boss is actually a creature from Scottish folklore. It's considered an... elf. It resembles a skinless centaur and characterized by having a face with an enormous gaping mouth and a single giant eye that burns with a red flame. The in-game model of Jackrabbit actually shares a lot in common with his folklore counterpart considering the laser eyes and ravenous mouth on the model. I also didn't notice this until after the recording, but Jackrabbit is also actually a centaur as well. Another interesting tidbit about the creature is that in Scottish folklore, this creature has an aversion to running water and can easily be eluded by crossing a river. Meanwhile, in La Mulana, he's stuck in a room filled with waterfalls surrounding the exits, as if to jail it. It's an interesting creature to use in order to guard the seal of origin. It seems like in terms of mythology, Spring in the Sky is meant to be a mix of Babylonian mythology along with some Irish and Scottish influences. An unusual combination to be sure, especially considering the land distance between the areas. La Mulana claims to be the bed of all civilizations though, so this may be just artistic interpretation. That's all for this week of La Mulana. Next week, you can take a look at the sun and Egypt. Lots of Egypt.